Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chem Knits, and today we are going to create at least four different colorways using purple and orange. These are two secondary colors on our color wheel and aren't often the only two colors I would pick to pair together. But I have a lot of ideas of what I would want to do with these two colors on yarn and so we're going to do a bunch of different versions, some that involve more blending, some that involve less blending, but I'm super excited to see where we end up. Before we jump in, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you and happy birthday to today's lab partner, Lene White. Lene, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly, and I really hope you're going to love your yarn. Speaking of the yarn, today we're going to dye Knit Pick Swish DK. This yarn is 100% superwash merino wool, and if you'd like to learn more about it, I do have a Knit Picks affiliate link down in the video description, and I may earn a commission if you make purchases after clicking on that link or any of my other affiliate links that I have down below. I've been pre-soaking this yarn in plain tap water for half an hour to an hour or so. Swish is a yarn base that does soak up water really quickly, so it is one where you can start with dry yarn, but that's not what we're doing today. I have a lot of ideas of what I might want to do today, but things are going to shift and move around as we play with the colors and see how they interact together. And the first thing I want to do is intentionally blend the orange and the purple I plan to use together. And those colors today are Dharma Acid Dyes in Royal Purple and Blazing Orange. And so to mix these colors together, I quickly put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, safety glasses and gloves, and measured out half a gram of the Blazing Orange Acid Dye and dissolved that with some hot tap water. I also went and measured out 50 milliliters of a 1% stock solution that I had already made a while ago of Royal Purple, so that way we would have one gram total to do a dip dyeing project to see how these colors would blend and so I could get a feel of how quickly Blazing Orange might strike to the yarn. I set up a dye bath with 16 cups of water, four tablespoons of white vinegar, and then after an internal debate, I started dip dyeing into royal purple first. That's because this is a color I know strikes quickly, and blazing orange might take longer. So for all that often I will go for the deeper, darker color second when I'm dip dyeing, I decided to start with the purple because we can get the dye bath to clear first. And if the orange is taking longer, I can just add everything in. And so this will help me get a feel of how the purple and orange look when they are combined together, because this will tell me for other techniques how much I want to keep things separated. Now I mentioned that glazing orange does strike really, really quickly. And so glazing is potentially on the table, even though that wouldn't really be a purple and orange colorway, but I don't know, something about doing purple with orange undertones feels kind of exciting. And so we'll see where we are after I look at this finished yarn. After dipping into the orange, I did heat everything for 30 minutes. This dip dyed colorway turned out so pretty. The way the color is blended, yes, it's a little bit more brown, a little bit muted, but that color works with the vibrant deep purple that we have from Royal Purple and this really saturated orange from Blazing Orange. I think I want to try to create a similar type of colorway but without as much overlap between the colors in the middle. At least I think that's what I want to attempt. So let's quickly go wash this because it's cool now and then we'll carry on with another version of an orange and purple colorway. I may not show the washing of all the other skeins but here we do in total have a 1% depth of shade, I'm adding some clear dish soap, which is one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. Maybe, do we have a hint of some yellow? Eh, I don't think so. Really not much. I mean, the blending of that color between them, this is so pretty. I know there are sports teams that are purple and orange, but I couldn't tell you who they are off the top of my head. So. This isn't, to me at least, specifically affiliated with any sports team, but I'm really happy there is no bleeding, and yeah, I'm going to pop this through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. And so now, finally, let's go see what I have planned 
for some other versions of this color. For colorways two and three, I needed to put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves because I wanted to create a colorway similar to our dip dyed one, but using the dry dye powder directly on the yarn. Attempting with a low water level to have half of the yarn be purple and half be orange. Using a yarn mop right off to the side to wipe off excess dye from my gloves before swapping colors or getting more dye out of a container. And so that yarn mop is colorway number three. Now our yarn pre-soaked with no acid, so I did add a little bit of vinegar at the very beginning onto our skeins. When I added the dye onto the yarn, I sort of speckled it around. And depending on how fast these colors start to strike, since we do have acid in here, we could end up with some speckles in the yarn. And I know we will likely end up with less even color coverage because of this application. But I did use my gloved fingers to try to massage the color through the yarn. If I was doing this technique with two or 300 grams of yarn in the pan, I would need to do a lot of flips. It would take a lot of time to get the coverage that I want, but because we have 100 grams of yarn in here, I'm able to spread it out a lot. I had attempted to keep the water level low because I was unsure if I was gonna steam set the yarn or if I would do a low immersion kind of dyeing process for it in the end. I think I will steam set the skein eventually, but I want to let things sit for a little bit because I want to avoid as much crossover as I can, and I know when I lift it and move it to the steamer basket, things will spread. But one thing I can do now is briefly go steam set the yarn mop because I plan to use this for our fourth colorway as well. And we have a some color on here already, not a ton, but anyway, I'm going to set a timer. Um, for maybe 15 minutes that I'll go ahead and steam that and 15 minutes that this will sit here and then we'll be back. I just brought over the warm yarn mop and the steamer basket insert and I blotted this dry because I now want to very carefully add our yarn in here. Hmm. I don't know how drippy the yarn is going to be. Actually, not really. Okay, I'm adding that in. It's dripping now. There's the purple side and then the orange side. So I have it like this. We're gonna put it in the steamer basket and wish me luck. Okay, I'm now gonna steam set that for 30 minutes and we're gonna bring our yarn mop over here to clean this up a little bit because we have one more skein that I want to dye and in dyeing that last skein, whew, this yarn is a little warm, but that makes it good for soaking up the color. Um, but to dye our final skein, I will be using this yarn mop more uh, to soak up more color. Okay, after 30 minutes, I am optimistic that when I remove this yarn, I saw some yellow come off, but I think that we have mostly successfully separated our orange and purple. So I'm gonna let this aside to cool, and we have minimal color underneath the basket, which is a very good sign. Our final colorway is gonna be more wild and random than the other two, well, we've died so far. And as I say too, the yarn mop is very wild, but this one might have even more blending because I am gonna set up a dye bath with our 100 grams of yarn, Maybe I will start with like about four or so cups of water, two tablespoons of white vinegar, and then we're gonna heat it up and add these colors in sort of patches on the yarn, leaning in to the blazing orange and royal purple and really letting them speak on the yarn. I'm not trying to blend them together entirely, but my goal is to have these bright colors in a more random pattern. When I was happy with the color on one side, I waited 10 minutes, hoping for the colors to absorb pretty well before flipping the yarn over. And then I tried to place the colors still somewhat randomly, but if I saw a hint of purple, that's where I added the purple. So that way we're not blending them completely, although I know that a lot of blending will happen here. And at the time I'm filming the voiceover, I don't know if I needed to flip it more. We only have 100 grams of yarn in the pan. Two flips might be enough to get good coverage. But no matter what, I waited 30 minutes from the last time I added the yarn uh, to heat it. 
and set the color. And then once I was done, I took our gorgeous yarn mop and then steam set that for 30 minutes as well. It's been 30 minutes and I'm gonna turn off the heat. This turned out amazing. I had expected that we were gonna have a lot more blending and bleeding of the colors, but it worked so well. There is a little bit of pastel, but I don't care, I love it. I'm gonna leave it here in the dye bath with the heat off to cool completely before we go wash it. I'm gonna wash all of this yarn together now. And hopefully we don't have any bleeding. But that's always hopeful. I added just a little bit of some clear dish soap. And this water was actually the pre-soak. Sometimes when I'm washing yarn, I do reuse the pre-soak, but sometimes in the pre-soak, if you see any color, because maybe it's rinsed out oils or something from your yarn, then I might not use the pre-soak for the first rinse of it when I'm washing. But there's nothing there. I mean, there wasn't anything there from the swish before, which is why I decided to use it in the first place. But uh, now that we've rinsed out the soap, you can see that there's no bleeding, which is always, always a very welcome sight. So anyway, I'm gonna go put this yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry. Maybe I'll do one more rinse, just to get that soap out. Uh, and then once it's dry, we'll come back and take a look at the finished dry yarn. You know, I still haven't looked up what sports teams are orange and purple. But anyway, here are the four different colorways I created using orange and purple. We have a very soft dip dyed colorway that transitions between the two colors with some blending in the middle. We have a similar variegated colorway that's half orange, half purple, but this time there isn't as much blending, and in particular, the purple is much more vibrant because there aren't any orange or yellow hints in there. Uh, the, the lineup is not perfect. Uh, there are some differences in the lengths of the orange section, but I don't think that that's a huge problem. The third colorway is a very random one where we have splotches of orange and purple and hints of white in sort of a random color placement. And then finally, we have our yarn mop that is, I mean, it's not even quite a version similar to this because the colors are pastel, but sometimes bright, sometimes speckled, and a little bit randomly placed all over. So of these four colorways, do you have a favorite? Because I have to say there's elements I love of all of them. And certainly I could come up with a lot of other colorway ideas for orange and purple. I could have dyed some heavy, chunky speckles, some super fine light speckles, used one color as the really dominant color and the other as an accent, or done a variegated colorway that is more regular repeating with more than two, so like four or even, what, eight sections, and had much more shorter repeats, but still a back and forth repeat, versus the more random one that I have as our third colorway. I wouldn't necessarily call this video a color challenge, but I find that taking markers or colored pencils is a really great way to play around with different colors to inspire you to play with different techniques. And, you may not always go with exactly what you sketch, but it is something that, which I didn't do at the beginning today, but I could have to try to make sure I had varied different types of colorways. Instead, I went about this today in an exploration way. First, I wanted to make sure I liked the way that orange and purple blended because this told me how much I needed to keep things separate versus it being okay if they fell together because I was hoping to create something like this, but I was afraid that the final colorway would feel a little too muddy, and I don't think it feels muddy at all. The intermediate color here between the purple and orange is a little bit more brown. Maybe it's going into almost like a fawn, foxy kind of colorway, a very orangey type brown, but looking at this yarn, I would call it an orange and purple yarn. I wouldn't call it orange, purple, and brown. It's just there's a more of a neutral in the middle. The orange and purple are really shining through as our dominant colors here. There is a hint of some color blending on this hand-painted colorway, but those transitions are so small that 
This one almost feels electric compared to our dip dyed one, even though they really are super close to being a similar colorway. I mean, they are similar colorways. You know what? I think if I had measured out the dry dye powder, I was going to directly apply onto the bottom skein. So that way it was a similar amount of pigment as the skein that we dip dyed they might feel even more similar because I think that there's overall more dye on that bottom skein, but they're very close and it was fun to create colorways that are so similar with two very different techniques. This one is my favorite. I, it's funny because I thought that the second one was gonna be my favorite because it really shows the purple and the orange, but I love that I was able to get something so random and it doesn't feel muddy at all. I mean, sure, there might be some areas where the colors might be slightly more muted, but I feel the orange and purple really singing and shining here. And we also have some fun, adorable speckles. Yarn mops are a place where often there is a lot of blending, but this also is just feeling very, very purple and orange to me. And this would pair really well with any of the other colorways and it's also just a lot of fun. Lene, happy birthday, and thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I had so much fun playing with this color combination and really hope that you're gonna love the yarn that I picked to send to you and that you've enjoyed this video. If you wanna learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Lene, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. You can pick a yarn base and tell me some colors to avoid, and then I will create a video with you in mind. And if you have a special request, say uh, orange and purple or something, feel free to reach out to me um, in the Etsy DMs so we can chat about this before you check out, because I can let you know if I think your idea is possible or not. Well, Nate, thank you again for being my lab partner. This yarn makes me so happy, and that is just so much fun. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I post new videos at least twice a week, and sometimes we have lots of fun live streams and things along the way, and so if those notifications are on, you will find out what is happening even if it's last minute. And subscribing is the biggest way you can support the content here. Thank you so much for watching.